Yeah. We're going to look at a couple more aspects of cell membranes. Okay, basically, membrane lipids have to be in this liquid or fluid state. Like you say, maybe not too runny, but more like a little bit on the slushy side. Okay, that's necessary for membranes to function because The membrane lipids and the proteins have to be able to move around inside the membrane so that they can interact with each other. Many membrane functions require some protein or some other molecule to move around inside the membrane, bind to some other molecule, and something happens. The membrane's got to be liquid for that to happen. Think of this. Let's suppose you've got yourself a nice port somewhere in either your country or whatever, and you, most of your trade is dependent on shipping to this port. Now what happens if that port freezes up? Shipping grinds to a halt. Your economy goes down as bad as ours did. In order for that port to properly function for shipping, you need to have it ice free. That's a big problem. It used to be in the Great Lakes and stuff that shipping would drop down quite a bit during the winter because the lake would, surface of the lake would freeze quite a bit. Now that's happening a little less so, so they still get some shipping. Um, Russia, some of those ports in Russia, they had to shut down during the winter. You know what Russian winters are like. They're very nasty. And those ports just completely freeze up. Bye-bye, trade. They got some military bases too in the submarines. They have to have icebreakers to get carve a path for submarines to get out and you know patrol around for Anubis or whatever the submarines do. But anyway, um, at any rate, you know you need those things to be in a liquid state because these molecules have to move around and interact with each other. If they don't, membrane function grinds to a halt. So one aspect of membranes. Second aspect of membranes. or whatever of a cell membrane. When you see your classic textbook picture of cell membrane, everything looks the same, right? Okay, in real life, membranes can differ quite a bit. The same membrane can differ quite a bit in composition, both proteins and lipids. For instance, here we have these two layers of the membranes. membranes of face. Like one part of the membrane, for instance the major cell membrane, one part faces the outside. So it's often called the external face, the external layer, one that faces the outside. And then the other one's in the cytoplasm, the internal or cytoplasmic face. Well anyway, what happens? The 
the lipids and the proteins from one side, one layer of face to the other, can differ quite a bit. You may have different lipids here than here. You may have different proteins here than here. So they can be quite a bit different. The two layers of the same membrane can be considerably different. So we can have differences between the two layers of the membrane. Different composition across the board. But that's not the only kind of differences we can get in the membrane. Turns out if you look at a cell membrane, even within the same layer or face of the cell membrane, you can find significant differences. Local concentrations of certain lipids and depletion of others, patches that are rich in one protein and not another, and so on. So we would do a three-dimensional diagram of a membrane. Like so. Okay, kind of like a sandwich here. We can have the same face, in other words, the same layer, we can have a localized region or patch that has one composition, and then another patch that has a completely different composition, and a third patch that's different still. And they call these different localized patches, they call them lipid rafts. And the proteins can differ too. Now these patches are very small, they're only you know, a few tens of nanometers across. And since things are constantly changing, they're very hard to investigate. We know they're there, and we know they're important. For instance, certain membrane proteins will only function properly if they're surrounded by certain types of lipids, and you put others around them, they'll stick, but the protein won't work right. So certain proteins require a certain lipid environment. Others may require a different lipid environment. And maybe this particular raft here is going to be more fluid than this one, and so on and so forth. So if you look at a membrane, picture a membrane as a molecular scale, scale quilt. How do you make a quilt? You get a whole bunch of different types of fabric and stick them together to make the top layer, and then you have something different as the bottom layer. That's a good analogy for cell membrane. Now, like I said, we know these lipid wraps are important, but they're extremely hard to study because they're small and they're constantly changing. And that makes things real difficult for the experimentalists to try to investigate these. So there's a lot of stuff. What are they? What do they do? What's their roles? How quickly they change and so on. But we do see that they are there. So membranes are not this nice, uniform, smooth thing like you see in the textbook drawings. Hello. stay up too late last night. Okay. All right. So that's a few aspects of basic membrane structure. Okay. I'll try to upload these in the next couple of days, by the way. <laughs>